Good morning, everyone. I'm going to ask Karen Cecilia here. I'm going to ask all you PMP people out there, all of you that dislike me so very much, to put it your dislike for me. Just put it aside for a few minutes because I don't dislike or hate PMP people. I love PMP people. And the only PMP in this country that I don't like is Annette Parchment. Still don't like her. She has made it worse now with her old Dennis Meadows foolishness. And she's now on her way to lose in the PMP seat, even though they're hype up themselves about winning PMP seat. They're in for a rude awakening. You say they have no, them have no idea what Jamaican people are out there thinking. Um, I'm asking you. I know you don't like me. I can't say I feel the same way about you, because I don't. Um, I, I don't harbor those dislike things that wanna harbor. I'm going alone to that. Um, I am fair and I'm balanced, and I try to to treat people the same way that I expect them to treat me. Of course. When you have that kind of expectation, you're already disappointed because people are people and they all have their moods, as Lou Rawls once said. So, but I'm just asking you, just hold on to your dislike for me. Just take it and put it one side for a few minutes and just listen, listen to me for a few minutes, all right? And within these few minutes, I am hoping that the Burks will give me 15 days this time or maybe 20 days to... um to retract and apologize and and and, and put it in the, the newspaper, whatever newspaper. So I'm hoping for 20 days um, this time from them. So let me repeat to you, all of those of you who believe that, who don't know, and I'm um, gonna hope you're chatting crap about what I say. Now I don't stop you from saying what they want to say. And I've never back and forth with people about them saying something about what I say or something about me. I want them to notice that. Whenever I want to say anything about me, I am not going to come on your Facebook page or go out there on my Facebook page and go on with nothing unless I believe it is something that is worth talking about or worth engaging you or war you for it or quarrel with you for it. You are free to say anything you want to say because it's your Facebook page. You can write anything you want. It's your YouTube channel. It's your X. It's your Instagram. You can say the damn thing you want. Don't let nobody stop you from saying anything you want. All right? But um, some of you would not know the facts or the truth if it even fell from the sky and hit you in your damn head. But all of you have the ability to do deductive reasoning. And all of you have the ability to pick sense out of nonsense. Come on, we're Jamaicans. Picking sense out of nonsense is one of our, apart from Aki and Salfish and Ganja and Red Stripe beer, picking sense out of nonsense is also one of our national treasures. Nobody picks sense out of nonsense like the Jamaican people. So I don't have that ability. And I want you to put in this like for me aside for a minute. Listen to what I ever say. And um and pick that sense out of the, the rest of nonsense. Alright? So let me repeat for those of you who have all kind of things to say. Those of you who are saying that the Burks should sue me, I wish they would. I honestly do wish that they would sue me. Alright? But for those of you who are saying all of that. Continue to say it because I want them to. I really want them to go file that lawsuit. So let me repeat, see if I can give them a helping hand to go file that lawsuit. Angela Brown Burke is under investigations by the FBI. Let me repeat that. Angela Brown Burke is under investigation for the cloning of Paul Wells' phone by the FBI. It goes a little further than that. Because the FBI have to share information and get in contact and bring on board the National Crime Agency in Britain. And the National Crime Agency is the British version of the FBI. Another British agency is also involved, which is the, um, the fraud agency. I think they call themselves Action Fraud, while the British them are very simple about things. Um, action Fraud, which is a cyber, a, a cyber security agency in Britain. The FBI and the National Crime Agency operated under the same umbrella, them doing things together with that investigation. Action crime comes into the play because of the account number, the account that which belongs to Paul Burke. 
and Angela Bromberg. It's Paul Berg Ganja account. It's, uh, you know, the Ganja business kick off in this country. The Ganja thing that Raymond Price set in motion in this country and Mark Golding want to take credit for, you know, that one. Paul Burke went around the country and him engage all kind of people in the ganja business. Of course, Paul Burke always does that and then leave the people them out in the cold and him run out there and make money and do him one. So they have him, I when I'm him, him all that. You know, if you engage a lot of people and then him alone end up um making making all the money. But let me not say that for fact because there are some people who quarreling, but then there are some who not. You know? So that is those are things that I'm repeating to you, that that is so. Now, they are investigating her for the cloning of Paul West Ford, which is a total and separate thing from the death, alleged, supposedly death, of Paul West, baby mother number two, and the 10-month-old baby. We're not, that is not yet verified. And... I, uh, I should admit to you that I am skeptical about all of this. I am not Matlock, I am not Angela Lansbury, I'm not Agatha Christie, but I have some skepticism about it. But the thing that you all must understand is this. There's been mother number one. There's been mother number two who has a baby. There's been mother number one who has a eight-year-old daughter for Paul. Well, there's been mother number two who has a who had a 10-month-old baby for Paul Well. There is Paul Burke and there is Angela Brown Burke. But then there is also the mysterious Jessica Deans. And Jessica Deans is, Jessica Deans plays a more pivotal role in this than anybody ever thought. And I'm not going to talk about being mother number one arrest and she's with the police, them still questioning her, them still cheating, doing statement. They have not yet charged her up to the making of this voice note. They've not charged her yet. And I'm saying I am not talking about those things because I don't have everything and I'm, I am still a skeptic. All right? I might be proven wrong, but I am still a skeptic in all these things. But you all must understand that this is a vast conspiracy. To destroy Philip Fiala Paul well, a vast conspiracy that started when Paul well gun was stolen. And this is the part where I'm asking you to pick sense out of nonsense. So let's go back a bit because our police force does not investigate by going back. Our police detectives are detectives that look into things that are in front of them. They prosecute and investigate things that are in front of them. They does not have the sophistication to go back a year back or two years back to check on something to tie it in with something that they know. They don't do that. Maybe them no watch Law and Order. Maybe them no watch um, NCIS. Maybe them no watch uh, Hawaii Five O. We don't know. Maybe them no watch it. But our police force don't, don't seem to do that. Our police de detectives, they always focus on what's in front of them. And that's because, I mean, any ordinary, normal police investigator with any level of sense would want to look into the possibility that this is a vast conspiracy to destroy Paul Well. And they would want to go back to that, to that file and get back that file about Paul Well's gun being stolen and check back that file see who they spoke to, who had access to Paul Wells' vehicle, because the gunman never hold up Paul Wells and take him gun. No gunman never hold up Paul Wells, never broke into his vehicle and mash up him, him glass, the, 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 the car door or, or window to get the vehicle. That, that gun was taken by somebody who was close to Paul Wells. And everybody come up with all kind of conjecture about how that could have happened and and people say, people make those comments based on, um, some, some people make comments based on Paul Wells' lifestyle that they perceive. Some people make those comments about all kind of things, uh, different, different things to come to that conclusion. But here's what I think. I think that the stealing of Paul Wells' gun was the beginning of this vast operation to take down Paul Wells. That's what I think. And I'm going to separate what I think 
to what I know to be true. That is what I think. All right? I think that baby mother number two, who's a riser, who was sleeping with Bunting, who was into the Paulberg rise camp, I think she was integral in the stealing of Paul Wells' gun. I think so. I think that baby mother number one, baby number two, was also very close friends with Jessica Deans. That is what I think. These are not facts that I know, and I want to separate those things so you can know what I think. It is known, however, known that being mother number two is a riser in the rice camp, close with the Burks then, close with all of the other risers then, was sleeping with Bunting, which is why Paul well, was, was um, skeptical about the baby being his and wanted the, the DNA and all the rest of it. The Burks, Paul and Angela, saw baby mother number two as a pawn as a pawn in their plot to take down Paul well and so they befriended her kept her close and Jessica Dean's job it was to keep her in the fold to say things to her to to agitate her feelings toward Paul well wanting to to, to get the DNA and you women out there, you know what I'm talking about. And I want to pause and tell you about a real life story that happened and I saw it on Dateline MSNBC. There is a story, there is this case on MSNBC Dateline. This young fellow killed himself, committed suicide. For months he was saying that he wanted to and he's threatening to. He was a senior at a high school. I don't remember which, which state it, it, it took place in. I should have looked that up before I come on the voice now. But he was a senior in a high school. And he had one best friend as a girl. In his text messages to his this girl, his friend, not, not girlfriend, but girl friend, he oftentimes said to her, he feels that he does not belong. Um, his parents are rich, come from a nice family, live in a nice neighborhood, get all the best things, going to a very good school, have all the opportunities laid out in front of him for his choosing. But somehow he felt that he did not belong and he doesn't want to be here. And he kept, he kept saying that to her in text messages. She kept repeating to him in those text messages, man, if you want to do it, do it. And for months, they were back and forth in about it. And he would say, he would text her at one point and he said, I'm going to do it today. How do you think I should do it? And she would text back and she would give him suggestions as to how he can commit suicide. And then the next morning, she would text and she would say, well, if you don't answer me now, I guess you did it. But he would answer and said he didn't have the strength or the courage to do it. And then she would say, oh, you're full of shit. In other words, she was egging him on, egging him on to go and kill himself, to commit suicide. The long and short of the story is this. At the end of the investigations by the FBI and other aid and police in, in the state, they concluded that she should be charged for murder. Why did they conclude that? They concluded that because in some of the text messages, and this is where this is where you separate somebody wanting to, I believe that if somebody wants to commit suicide, you should leave them for going to do it. I am not talking out anyone not to commit suicide. If somebody come to me and said to me, you know that um, I don't feel like I belong here. I feel like I need to leave this, leave this earth. If somebody come to you and say that to them, don't try to tell them that, it can't be that bad because you don't know it is that bad. When them reach the stage to actually say it, it is that bad. Them don't want to be here anymore. This is not their life, no matter what it is. What is whatever it is that is pushing them to do this, you don't know. So you can't offer any kind of advice. Thank God nobody ever come to me about that. But if they should, the question I would ask is, do you feel you need help? 
Because that is the key question. That is the key question, not why. And Lord, no think so. It's not that bad. Are you mother? Talk to our man. You want some people to talk to? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't go there, sir. You, you don't know. You don't know what they're feeling. You don't know what they're going through. I can't even begin to imagine what somebody is going through to come to the conclusion that they want to end their life. So I stay away from that. But in this text message, there was a particular set of text messages that the police found where he was saying to his friend, his girlfriend, not, not girlfriend, not intimate girlfriend, but girlfriend. He was saying to her, I think I need help. I think that I should talk to somebody. Do you, do you know anybody I could talk to? Do you think I could talk to Mrs. So-and-so? And he named um, somebody in the school. I think maybe, maybe their version of a guidance counselor or their version of a, of a, of a, of a, a, a counselor to deal with some kind of thing. Um, and he asked her, and she said, no. Um, and she said, Mrs. Smith don't know shit. Have you ever seen how she dress? Have you ever heard her talk? She was discouraging him from getting help and encouraging him to go ahead and commit suicide. They charged her ass for murder and convicted her. Why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because of the role that Jessica Deans played in this saga. So Jessica Deans and... You have to ask yourself a couple of questions while you listen to me, while you put aside your dislike for me. You ask yourself a couple of questions. First question you have to ask yourself is why this elaborate plan to destroy Philip Paulwell? Elaborate plan to destroy Philip Paulwell. And the second question you have to ask yourself is who is Jessica Deans? So Jessica Deans was the conduit between both baby mothers. As is evident in baby mother number one statement that she put out and some other communication she has had with other people, she did not know, baby mother number one did not know about baby mother number two until Jessica Deans revealed it to her. And Jessica Deans revealed the existence of baby mother number two and the baby to baby mother number one for a specific reason for a specific reason. And that reason goes back to the stealing of Paul Wells' gun, the cloning of Paul Wells' phone, and what Paul Well and Baby Mother Number One was planning to do about the cloning of the phone. So Jessica Deans was frantically, frantically sending an email. We don't know how she got the email address of being better number one, and at some point in some of the conversations and the statement that being better number one have made, she thought Jessica Deans was being better number two at some point until she was told that she's not by Jessica Deans. Jessica Deans was reaching out to baby mother number one to inform baby mother number one that there is a baby mother number two with a baby. When she finally got to her, because being mother number one said in her statements and stuff that she has given that she never saw those reaching out emails and and um and text and messenger message from Jessica Deans till long uh, late 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 because Jessica Deans kept going after her, emailing her, want to talk to her, right, and keep saying and, and somebody must go back and read because somebody have it. Go back and read some of it. I'm going to ask Michelle to, to clarify some of what I said and to put out some other things to, to back up what I'm saying. In one conversation that, 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 that got me interested, one conversation, one thing that Jessica did said to baby mother number one, and because I have an investigative mind, I'm a politician, and many people don't know that part of politics now is psychology. And if you're not good at psychology, you can't go talk to people about politics. So you better be good at that. So this one little thing that Jessica Deans stood out for me. Jessica Deans said to be a mother number one, why are you trying to catch us? Why are you trying to catch us? Are you trying to catch us? I am telling you this. I'm telling you that. But the thing that 
stands out for me is, why are you trying to catch us? Catch us, us who? Catch us who about what? So Jessica Deans was on the um, defensive when Babe Mother number one was saying back some things to her. Jessica Deans is the, the strings, the tie that binds Babe Mother number one and Babe Mother number two together. Jessica Deans is the person who pitched Babe Mother number one and Babe Mother two together. Pitch them together. Make sure they know each other. Make sure that baby mother number one know who she is and that she have a baby. Make sure of that. Make sure that baby mother number one knows a whole heap of other things in regards to baby mother number two. And baby mother number one, I'm not excusing any actions that they might charge her for. I'm not excusing that I don't know yet. I, I am skeptical. I'm not. I'm talking about the elaborate conspiracy to destroy Philip Philip Baldwin to get him out of East Kingston. And Jessica Deans is string number one. She is the, the grandmaster in the chess game, moving the pieces to create animosity between Babe Mother 1 and Babe Mother 2 to make sure Babe Mother 1 knew about number two and make sure that there is some kind of animosity between them, creating that. Same thing that the young lady did by keep telling the young man, saying, we're going to kill himself. And he must seek no help. He must just go on. It is my understanding that baby mother number one came to Jamaica maybe a week or less than a week before the whole disappearance of number two and the baby. When baby mother number one came to Jamaica, she came to Jamaica with an FBI agent. Now this is not conjecture. I'm telling you this. This is truth. She came to Jamaica with an FBI agent. Baby mother one came to Jamaica. No, no, you, you know the FBI. For all of those who have angst with me and the FBI thing, the FBI don't operate with one man thing. They operate as a team. So if she comes here with an FBI agent, I am going to assume that the agent that she came here with is the lead agent. And I'm going to assume that there were agents here waiting for lead agent, lead agent. Maybe one, maybe two. Like more than likely two. Because it's 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 um, out of country. Um they came here, be by the number one and the FBI agent for one particular reason, which is why Jessica Deans was so frantic, frantically trying to reach her, to corrupt her mind, to send her off track, to send her going a different direction. I don't know, I don't know how powerful these things are, you know. To trip her up. Jessica Deans was trying to trip her up and succeeded in tripping her up. She came to Jamaica with the FBI agents. Because Philip Paulwell and the FBI was going to have a news conference, which she, Babe Mother Number One, was going to be a part of. That news conference was going to be Babe Mother Number One, Philip Paulwell, the FBI, and they were going to give a news, news conference about the cloning of Philip Paulwell's phone. Knowing the FBI, they probably wouldn't have called Angela Brown birth name but they would have given enough information for us to know that Angela Blomberg is the culprit that cloned Philip Paulwell phone. Now let me remind you, I'm going to remind you of something when, when I disclose something else. That press conference did not happen. That press conference went off track because of the input of Jessica Deans, all that she was putting in. And maybe the day before or so, the baby missed. I think the press, think the press conference was scheduled for either the Monday or the Tuesday. Um, Roll about the time that, it, that, that everybody went missing. I, I, have to go, I have to go check that and put that out to you to clarify you. 
But the press conference was scheduled with the FBI and Philip Powell and being mother number one to talk about the cloning of Paul Wells' phone by Angela Brown Burke. Looking forward to that suing papers. Jessica Deans, which everybody in Jamaica should know by now, is Saya Nikisha Wilson. Saya Nikisha Wilson has been the, the grandmaster carrying out the the instructions of Angela and Paul in terms of the destruction of Paulwell to bring down Philip Paulwell. Jessica Deans has been the, 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 the grandmaster in that chess game. She is running that chess board with instructions from the Burks. Some of you might recall that some time ago, the same, say, Nikisha Wilson cloned Winston Green phone. God bless his soul. May he continue to rest in the arms of Jesus. But she was sleeping with Winston Green and um, she cloned him phone because she seemed to be a sick young woman, say Nikisha Wilson, and she would do anything for money and access to power. She don't exactly want the power, she just want access to power and to be, you know, that, that kind of people will want to be in, you know, have access to power. So Jessica Deans threw the baby mothers together to create that clash. And some of you will say, yeah, but the girl I am on for murder, we well, don't know that yet. And I would like to advise you, know, I don't have to listen to me as usual, but I'd like to advise you know, to hold on that argument a little bit. Hmm? Whatever she did, and I can conclude that she did something that led to the arming of the nine month of the ten month old baby. I really don't care about the mother. I still don't. Don't call me heartless because I don't care about her because she was a part of this elaborate plan to destroy Paul. Well, she was in the middle of it, in the thick of it. The Berkshire was using her to infiltrate Powell, which is why every time Powell make a move, them no. So there's Jessica Deans, number one. The elaborate thing to take down Powell. We also believe, I believe, that Jessica Deans was the one who orchestrated being the number two to take away Powell's gun. Now, I don't know what the police know. I don't know what they have. As I said, our police are limited in terms of um, their intellect, and I'm not an intellectual, you know, but in terms of their investigative skills, they don't believe in going back one year, two year, and look at something. Somebody name come up in an ordinary investigation two years after something happened to them. You go back. You must go back. Something has missing a missing gun, and then this one year later, go back, man. Go back to that file, and start piece things together as an investigative officer. And once a piece, well, I think maybe the police don't want to do it. I think they want to stay away from it. That they want to concentrate on the immediate crime in front of them, the abduction and, and, and disappearance of being mother, um, number two, and the baby. I am not going to impose my own thought process in terms of what happened with that. Not now. I, I, I wait a bit. Not now. I will have something to say, but not now. The second reason for the elaborate plan to take down Philip Paulwell is this. Paulwell have begun to make some moves to reclaim the Norman Gardens division and control his constituency from Paul Christopher Burke. I've said it before, let me say it again. Paul Burke is basically running the Norman Gardens division. And he's running the Norman Gardens division because the councillor Jacqueline Lewis is an absentee councillor. She don't live here. And Powell should remove her very quickly. Very quickly, Powell should people them up in arms with her. Just yesterday evening, um, somebody called me from East Kingston and said, You can't, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. You can't call me back. And when we call back, at six, seven people for the one phone call. Sometimes whispering, sometimes loud shouting. They don't want her back, and Paul should remove her, and nobody can stop him from remove her. 
Paulo Kenneth go to him, executive go to the um the part, the regional um council and say removing her. She's absent. She has not performed her job well as councillor. It's Paul Burke running the division. And part of Paul Wells' problem in his constituency is because Paul Wells running one of his divisions, because Philip, Philip Paul Wells running one of his divisions. So Paul Wells now having recognized this elaborate plot to take him down because they, they ramp up the plot. I'm going to tell you when they ramp up the plot. All right? I'm going to tell you when. But Paul Wells started making moves to reclaim his constituency because he is the one that the people of East Kingston and Port Royal elected. Nobody elected Paul Burke. Paul Burke couldn't run for dog catcher in East Kingston. He wouldn't even get him one vote. He wouldn't even vote for himself if he should offer himself to run for anything. Nobody in East Kingston and Port Royal would vote for Paul Burke for anything. Not even those who perceive to be his friend. They probably wouldn't show up. But for some reason... He has total control of one of Paul Wells' division, the people's representative, the person that the people go out and vote for. His name on the ballot. Paul Burke's name is not on any ballot. Nobody ever elected him to anything. He has no business running one of Paul Wells' division. And Paul Wells began to make moves to reclaim his division. Rightly so. Because if he doesn't reclaim that division, the constituency is going to fall apart. Because that's part of the conspiracy to make sure the constituency fall apart. That's part of the conspiracy. Paul Burke is being in normal gods to make sure that Paul will fail. And Councillor Lorraine Dobbs is going to vex him, and she vex him, you know, but she's a non-performing council as well. Not in that helping Paul will and Paul will probably need to remove both of them. They are a drug in the constituency. And the people need new councillors. They don't ask for the changing of the mem member of parliament. They're asking for the changing of the councillors. That's what they're asking for. So Paul Burke recognizing that Paul will making the moves to reclaim his constituency. That's one of the things. What triggered this off? What triggered off the pushing and the prodding by Jessica Deans to make sure Baby Mother number one knew about Baby, no, baby Mother number two. For them to set up all them derelicts where them set up. And believe me when I tell you, them set up derelicts. But you've got to wait. You have to wait. Which is why I'm asking you. Just put aside your dislike for me right now. I'm going to look. I'm going to deduct. I'm going to be sleuths. Go reason things out. Go talk to people in East Kingston. Just put aside that and wait. Be patient. I'm a patient person. I am a very patient person. I am not jittery. You can't say something about me. I'm around on Facebook and start going with things. I am not that. People in my community fear that. That somebody do something and I hear about it. And for days, weeks even, I never look at them until the time comes to look at them. I'm very patient. But the patience is not about whether you are wait to do something. The patience is about gathering more information. The patience is about getting more a better feel of what is happening around you. The patience is about not judge, not rushing to judgment, but to deduce and configure timelines and events and personnel and piecing it together to come to a conclusion. That is what the patience is all about. Nothing else. What kick off this whole thing that have now led to seemingly the death of a 10-month-old baby? And I don't even want to talk about the possible death of a 10-month-old baby. I can't talk about it like some people can. I can't. I'm not as tough as you all think I am. The baby mother... I'm not holding any brief for her. I do not care. She was an original part of this conspiracy. She, Jessica Deans, Angela, and Paul, and whoever else them have in the midst. I think there's somebody else. I just don't put my finger on it yet. I don't want to call the person name until I put my finger on it. I don't. I just going by information, piece, piece information that I get. But I need to go some place before I clarify that and see if that person really involved. And then I will come around and then I'm going to send me an next letter about something about suing. 
The whole thing got into a frenzy when the FBI won, when one, the FBI was coming to do the press conference with Paul, with Paul Well and be a number one. And two, when Paul Burke, with the help of some PMP delegates, put in the constitution that nobody can challenge Mark Golden a year out of the elections. And let me repeat to you, PMP people. Paul Burke has put in the constitution. It's uno good game the constitution to have it uh, do anything anymore with it. It's uno game. I would have the guts nor the courage to take it back from him. And Mark Golden don't want him, don't want to take it away from him. Because Mark Golden play a role in I'm soon telling you what role Mark Golden play. And this is where you're probably not going to put away on the dislike for me. Because I'm going to tell you the role that Mark Golden played. Which is why he can't say nothing all now. Paul Well intended to go to the conference to say to the private session of the conference that this thing that they put in the constitution that nobody can challenge a leader a year out from the election is not only unconstitutional, it is undemocratic. It is, it is the kind of thing that Putin would put in or Erdogan would put in this is the kind of thing that dictators put in, the kind of thing that the Chinese put in where man served as, as Chinese president for life. This is the kind of end undemocratic things that start to erode the basic tenets of democracy. And you, the PMP people, have allowed it to happen. And Paul was a part of the first basic um, depleting the basic tenets of democracy by having four vice presidents who did not face the delegates. Because I'm afraid that having a, an election of vice president might fracture the party. Having an election internally always unites the party. It never ever fractures it. It is people who lose and don't know how to accept losses that always cause the fracturing. It's not the, 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 the act itself of having a of having an election, internal election, that divides the party. No, it is not. Peter Phillips and Portia had, had, had an election. The division lasted up no more than two months before people start getting it back together. PJ and Portia had a 92 election. There was no division there, so people vex. And then people are vexed more. Why? It is incumbent on the winner to make sure that the losers feel welcome. It is incumbent on the winner to make sure that the losers feel included. Feel like this is nothing. This was just a contest between me and you and me win. That's all it was. But it is incumbent on the winner to make sure of that, to do everything he or she can to make sure of that. Mark Golin did not do that. If anything, he has gone out of his way to further divide the party. And Paul and Angela Brownberg has ensured and somehow no so deep into no own look of positions and no own look of money. Tell me not paying attention to these things. And believe me, it hurt me sometimes to watch you know. It hurt me to watch you know how no protect no council seat. How no 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 on the NEC membership. And they don't recognize and realize that it is the Burks who are leading Mark and who's telling him that don't do that and don't do that. They don't want the party to unite. If the party unite, the Burks now have no role in it. Nobody likes them. None of you that dislike me like them. Matter of fact, who don't like me more than them? I can put on my part on that, that most of them will hate me and dislike me, like me more than them. If the party should unite, they would not have a role to play. And they can't let that happen. They have to keep that division in order to control Mark, to make sure that their power is secure. It's not about Mark, it's about their power. So Paul well, what kicked it into high gear that caused the seam in the death of a 10-month-old baby is that Paul well was going to conference 
to say to the conference, this is undemocratic. This would erode everything that we have fought for, everything that we believe in, everything that Norman Manley said, everything that Michael said, everything that PJ said, everything that Peter Phillips said, everything that Portia Simpson Miller said. This is going to throw it all away. But let me remind you, the PMP delegates and voters, that this is the very same thing they did to Peter Phillips in 2019. Peter Phillips and his team was making the case that a challenge now would fracture the party going into an election. Now, I can tell you this. I never buy it then. I don't buy it now. I believe with all my heart. And I still believe that Peter Bunting's challenge to Peter Phillips in 2019 was his democratic right as a member of the People's National Party to mount that challenge. It was his right. I mean, I'll take that from him as much as he's a disgusting animal. It was his right to offer himself to the delegates of the People's National Party and to present himself as an alternative. It was his right. Any member's right. As a member in good standing, you can offer yourself. That means what position? You can just get up a conference and get one person to nominate you and go up on the ballot and go run. Enoch Blake ran for vice president every year for about six years. Who could stop him? Nobody. Paul Burke himself ran against P.J. Patterson several times for chairman of the People's National Party. Who could stop him? Nobody. Because every year, the party chairman has to be re-elected. Every year, the party general secretary has to be re-elected. Every year, the NEC members have to be re-elected or new ones elected. Every year, the people in the constituencies and the division have to elect new officers. No, Ma, get not to have that. No, if he's the only one who do have to face that, that him don't have to come to you September next year and say to you, I am offering myself again as leader, and somebody can get up and say, me offer myself too. They want to take that away from any ordinary member or anybody who have aspirations of being a leader. Do you know that things like, that is things like these cause places like Russia and China and Turkey, and then places to exist, and Iran and Iraq can all in places. It's things like these, that this is how it started. Them take away one little piece, then them take an extra little piece, then a little piece are sooner or later only irrelevant. When they can't walk around and beat up on the chest, but they not delegate for nothing. And if a couple of you organize yourselves and go to the NEC to say, yo, we want that come out of the constitution, they will come to and they will buy one out. They will go to one ten thousand and say, make it stable because Mark needs to steal rare. They will sell on an argument and take their money. I don't know how to make sure they're not in the, in the conference room when that my argument come up. But Paul was going to the conference. He was going to the conference with it. And he had support. He had support. He had lots of support. And this is where Mark comes into the world debacle now. Mark complained incessantly about Paul Well. Incessantly complained. And Paul Burke said to Mark, don't worry, I'll take care of Philip. Now, those of you who know him as well as I do, let me just, let me just um, see if I can mimic that conversation for you. So Mark Bowling complaining and whining and whinging about Paul Well coming to conference and doing this and Paul Well, this and Paul Well. And Paul Burke said, Mark, don't worry. You're going to be prime minister. I will talk to Philip. I will deal with Philip. Don't listen to the talk part, you know, because that's on talk. Like a gangster. Just like him, just like Donald Trump. That's why I'm talk. Like a mob boss. I will talk to Philip. I will deal with Philip. Don't worry, I will take care of it. May I repeat for your word for word what Paul Berg would have said? Mm-hmm. And Mark would say, okay. And leave it alone. And leave Burke to talk to him. Now, no other leader would do that. No other leader. Peter Phillips would have sent a call Paul well and sit down with him. PJ would have sent a call Paul well and PJ and John Jr. and KD and, and, and Vin Lance would have sit down and talk to Paul well about that. But no, not this flimsy, nasty-looking white man. 
that take over the People's National Party through devious means, through attack and treachery. Him said to Paul Burke, okay, which is when he come out and said, no, no, he is eyeballed deep into this conspiracy. And Mr. Tuno, you don't have to like me. You don't even have to like what I have to say. You don't even have to believe anything I've said. Just do no one sleuthing. Do no one investigations. Do no one deductions. Do no one ray ray blah blah. You know? Back when I used to watch westerns, my favorite line in any western. Once there's a bank robbery, nobody don't know who. The sheriff instruct the deputy. Say, okay, boys, let's go round up the usual suspects. <laughs> the usual suspects are the usual suspects. Who would do this? Who would do that? It's like in your house with a whole picnic, and you're trying to 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 to, to figure out um who threw the garbage through the kitchen window. Now, if I am trying to figure out who threw the garbage through the kitchen window. I am narrowing it down to two people. I'm narrowing it down to my grandson and his mother. That's them two. If, if I should look through the window and there is a drum with water right a little bit away from, the, from that side kitchen window, that water is to use in the toilet if there's no water or to wet the plants I and mean, if there's no water. And when them get lazy, and them don't see no garbage bag in the kitchen, the damn blasted people, them, them put them on through the window and rest things. Other people do it too. But if I am going to make a summation, if I'm going to deduct and reason it out, my, my, my usual suspect will be them too. <laughs> and I'm always saying, oh, it's them too, me always ask. Sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes it's somebody, sometimes my sister. Sometimes you're on my knees. But no matter what happens, I'm going for the usual suspects. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. I'm going straight to the usual suspects. Of course, I'm going to ask the other people them too. When them say no them. So, Mark Holin, don't know if him talk to Paul well privately, but Andrew Wallace, who is 29 points in the poll, and Mark is 14. In terms of the leader matchup, said what he had to say in Parliament. Members of Parliament get up, Mrs. Favor Williams, I believe, and express good wishes to Paul well, and then after that, Angela try a thing. Not genuine, just to cover up our tracks. And there you have it. Paul is going to conference to make noise about that clause. And there were people there who were going to make noise with him to have it removed so that PMP people can have their democratic rights restored. Because Paul Burke himself, under normal circumstances, would be quarreling about that. But those things don't make, don't make a difference to him now. Now he's a fight for him power and his wife power. So no one can throw it out. Back in the day, if anybody should ever suggest that shit, it would be the first person on the conference floor taking up the whole first part of the morning of conference going on about it. But no, it don't matter because it threatens him power and him wife power and them have to get rid of Paul Well. Paul Well is them focus. Paul Well is not involved in any abduction of baby mother or baby. Paul is not involved in this. The whole thing was directed at him to get him. And I want to you know, not to believe me, but to deduce it in myself and to conclude what I need to conclude about it all. That this is where it stands. And Philip Paul is not going to resign. Not after what I hear from the people in East Kingston for the last couple of days. In that point to resign and them don't want him to resign. They're dying to get rid of the Burks. They want this to be the straw that break the camel's back. They want the Burks them gone and they want Jacqueline Lewis gone. 
This is what the people of East Kingston and Port Royal want. And if they wanted anything else, I'd come and tell them. If they were saying that Paul should resign, I would have come come tell them. They are not saying that. Not one. Because they know more than some of them want to say. Because, as I said, I'm not saying nothing about the other part of it. But we will talk about the other part of it. That if it's the baby and the baby mother in Warwick Hills, in a Philip Powell constituency, do you know, do any of you, you know what it takes to get past, to go back at the place? Eh? You know, you not only need passport, you need visa from several countries. You probably need your, your birth certificate and your, and your, your driver's license and your, your food at last permit. You probably need several permits to go back at the place. Eh? Don't do anything. But as I said, we're not talking about that yet. I just want to make it clear to you that what I have said is true and I will continue to say it and I will not retreat from it. And this is a vast conspiracy by Paul and Angela Brownberg to get rid of Philip Paulwell and Mark has found himself in the middle of it because Paulberg promised him he's going to take care of Philip Paulwell. And he has not said anything yet as the leader of the opposition. Nothing. Him don't even, you know, a, a good press secretary would say to him, listen, you, need to, you, you don't need to mention Paul well, but you could go out there and talk about the baby and the baby mother who was a riser in him camp. You could say something uplifting and empathetic and, um, you know, to lift the spirits of people. The Jamaican police need more training in empathy in how they disclose information because I don't think they realize just how much grief they have they, they, they have set out on the Jamaican people when they just came out and just bam just announced that like that people were devastated by it by just hearing it they had no tact no way of you know when when the when the police in any state in the US is going to is going to announce that anything that something will happen, I want you to pay attention when that will happen next time in the, in the US. It's not only the police that is there standing there. There is always a psychologist or a grief counselor or somebody who get to say something to put the, the public's mind at ease. Put the police on such a boom and just come out and just drop that. Panic. So you need to ask yourself these questions in closing. Why this elaborate plot against Paul Well? Who took Paul Well's gun? Who's Jessica Deans? I thank you for listening to me. I have to go now. It take too long. God bless you all. You can re you can resume your dislike for me now. <laughs> God bless you. I implore all of you to stay safe and to keep the kids safe. Thank you.